the interview room Muzzy checking in the times here How you all doing? Alright, let's begin Let's have a chat about the fact that I want to interview the best fighters in the world And that's that Had a lot of guests from everywhere All across the globe Fighters tell me both the journey Hey guys, Muzzy here from Muay Thai Interviews again uh, My next guest, they're a husband and wife team uh, Before that, hope you all had a, uh, a good uh, Christmas and New Year's break and uh, you're all ready to get back into uh, the swing of things and, and get on with the uh, Muay Thai. Uh, as I said, my next guests are uh, their husband and wife team from Queensland. They spent three years living and training at the WMC gym in Koh Samui uh, with their three sons but have now settled permanently on the Sunshine Coast and two years ago opened up their own gym called Team Stalder. I'm joined by Elise and Brody Stalder. How are you guys? Good thanks, mate. Good thanks. Uh, that's much better. So uh, take two, guys. Uh, Muddy uh, stuffed it up the first time, so we, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> so, so we can now fix up things and change what we wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's worked out in everyone's favour. So I'm curious to find out uh, how you both found uh, Muay Thai, and is that what brought you two together? Yeah, so um, for me, um, I was a small guy and I used to play rugby league. Um, Small man syndrome, thought I was six foot tall, it was probably about three foot. Um, probably had a bit of a little bit of an anger. You did, but oh, okay, I did have an anger <laughs> thing with me. <laughs> um, you know, just trying to take out big boys and then not. And then um, someone just approached me and said, Mate, why don't you try a sport where you can actually have to go against people your, your own size? Um, I walked into a Muay Thai gym and I never, I never went back to sport. And, and um, yes, yeah, where I met Elise in the gym. And Elise, yeah, tell and I was, I was, I was watching people train. Uh, the kids were training. I thought it was awesome. Um, I went to a fight show that I think uh, you were fighting. Brody was yeah. fighting, um, and it was absolutely awesome. It was so good to see females in the ring. Um, I guess that I've always put myself down as a um, a. a a tomboy, but still a girly girl. So it was really great to see um, these women in the ring doing what I would say is like a man's sport. I used to want to play rugby league when I grew up, but I wasn't allowed. I was told to go dance, and I hated it. Um, and I never did. I actually walked out. So I saw these women in the ring. They looked absolutely amazing. Um, they were tough, but they were still beautiful. Like they were still women, and that's that's what I liked about it. So I started training, training Muay Thai. Yeah, and um, Brody and I met met training. Awesome, awesome. And Elise, can you tell me a bit about your career? Because I know a little bit about Brody's, but, but to me, yours is a bit of a mystery. So I think it'd be be good if uh, people could hear about yours, because I know you, you've got your own career in your own right. Yeah, for sure. So I trained for um, a fair few years, and I'm, I'm someone who likes to set goals. So um, I was really enjoying it. I had a guy called Ben Tam, which is one of Brody's mates. Um, and he was training me because I didn't really want to train around Brody because it was just, you know, I guess that couple thing. You just don't want to, in, you know, intrude on their on their thing. So I was doing that until he turned around and, and I turned around. It was sort of like a combined thing. He said, you should have a fight. And I was like, what a great goal. Um, so I ended up asking Brody's permission to sort of train around him because, you know, to me and still is, you know, the best person to train around um, technically. Um, so yeah, I started training, I had a fair few injuries, just being a bit older, starting a sport, you know, shoulders, and I broke some bones, I did some all sorts of things, but because um, I loved it and I pushed myself, I had um, a few fights here in Australia, the weight division, I was fighting 52, max 55, but tried not to, so I wanted to do the 52 kilos. Um, I didn't really have too many, there wasn't too many women around at the time, um, so if was hard to get fights, got pulled out on a lot, um, day weigh-in, day before, week before. That was something that happened quite a lot. Um, fought in Thailand, that was the first time I fought full Thai rules. Padang over there was my trainer, which was Brody's. Um, I fought at Z1 International in 2014 on the same show as Brody. Um, while we were in Thailand, though, um, my weight division brilliant. And I mean, go figure, that's what happens. You move out of the country and suddenly that happens. So it was bittersweet. It was great to see that weight division just going off. Like, I love being in Thailand, looking at just all these girls just, you know, fighting and, you know, doing something that, that I love. And it, it was just great for the sport. 
but it was also, you know, shit that I wasn't there and couldn't be part of it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a little bit of what I've done and still love doing and being around. And, and can I ask, um, cause I've people, other people that I've spoken to, um, and, and had a chat with the fact that, that you were Brody's girlfriend at the time, is that one of the reasons why you, you did not want to train at the same gym? Because I, I know that with a lot of couples, they don't want to be known as like just the girlfriend that trains at the gym. But then once you started to sort of take it seriously, that's when it was like, yeah, okay, we can train together. Oh, a hundred percent. hundred percent. Like you just don't want, you know, there's none of that walk in the gym kisses or if you've had an argument and you just, it's not there. I broke my foot and I sat on the ground with a broken foot needing assistance and Brody ignored me for half an hour um, and still ignored me. He only helped me out of the gym with another person and I drove myself home crying with a broken foot and he only acknowledged and cared for me and loved me when he got home from the gym when he was finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was okay. I didn't see that as oh, you, you know, you're an asshole, you don't care. I saw that as, that was our place, you know, that he was a trainer to me, um, he was a training partner to me, he wasn't my partner yeah. at the time. So, and it's never been, we still like it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important. That's it, business and personal different in the gym, you know, that's, I think that's the way you got to keep it. Yeah, definitely. And, and at least like we were talking before, um, you mentioned, that you one of the reasons um, that you you stopped doing Muay Thai in, or in Australia, anyways, because you had quite a fair few pullouts on you. Um, can you talk? Yeah. Can you talk a bit about like um, the emotional roller coaster that that would that would have or play on your mind, knowing that you've you know you've trained for six to eight weeks or whatever your fight camp is, and then you know at the weigh in or a day before you're meant to weigh in or whenever the pullout is that you find out that you're not fighting and you've, you know, you've sacrificed all this time training and getting your body into peak physical condition, ready to go to war. And then all of a sudden it's not, you're not fighting. How does that make you feel? Oh, absolutely angry. Like no, no, you know, nothing else to say, right? So it just pisses you off. It's, um, I understand the injury. I completely, I know that I one time pulled out because I'd broken my foot and I actually turned up at the fight show on crutches. I remember it was Paul McCauley, um, looked at me and said, up, oh, it's true, because he saw this elephant foot on me um, and just went, well, you know, it's almost good for them to see, but, um, you know, you put in so much time that you just hope that someone's pull out is for legitimate reasons, not for they didn't get themselves ready on time, they didn't do what they should have done. Um, that, to me, isn't good enough, because there's two people training to get in that ring, and I just think that you should be putting in the same effort. I turned around. Um, I was, you know, older. I had three kids. Um, I had, you know, my husband. I had all, and I was working. I had all that going on. Never missed a training session. Did more work to try to, you know, I guess keep up with people to make sure that, you know, being a few years older, that, you know, I was doing all the right things. Um, and if someone turns around, you know, eight years younger, and you know, I feel like maybe they just have said, oh. You know, they just weren't ready on time, so they couldn't do it. I just didn't think it was good enough. Um, I even had one pull out, and um, they did replace them, but we weren't allowed to see the way in. We didn't see anything, and um, still friends with us. Great chick, but she got in there, and it was easily like a seven kilo difference. And Brady just looked, took, took one look at me and said, "You're smaller and faster, smaller and faster." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god!" Uh, went in there and won, but goddamn, that was hard. But I still wanted to fight. That was the point. Like. Yeah, I got pulled out on, but they replaced it. It was, to me, a giant standing in front of me. But I went, everyone I trained with in the gym was bigger. And just listen to Brody as he knows, smaller and faster, smaller and faster. Just go in there and do it because I worked my ass off and I wanted to get in there and do it. Do you find, um, like in general these days, because you have been, you guys have been involved in the Aussie Muay Thai scene for a while, that... Uh, that yeah there are a lot of people that will i don't know i guess you could say are a bit precious or yeah they they do pull out for not the best reasons or or things like that oh i'm sure i'm sure you do get it um brady probably you know would more likely have whether it's older history and knowing whether people did that some people have really bad nerves some people are known for really bad nerves but 
it just gets there and they just can't get in because of nerves. But I, I used to be like that. When I first started, I would get that nervous that I wanted to spew, cry, run away, didn't want to want to do it, but you just you kind of just had to. So, um, yeah, I, I get it, but also it's the the choice you make and, you know, if, 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 you, if you can't handle them, don't do it. Like, yeah, fighting is not a sport where you can go in half up. You've no. got to be 100 percent committed mentally and physically. Otherwise, you won't succeed. So, how do you? Because you've had over 70 fights now. How do yeah. you? How do you deal with your nerves? Like, does do you still have? I don't know. I guess you could say like the boogeyman on your shoulder, or do you, like do you get the those jitters the night before and 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 you know leading up to the fight, or have you learned to sort of control that and and quash that and put it in the back of your mind a lot better than when you had your first couple of fights, or is, or is it still the same as when you had your first fight? Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely, when I first started, yeah, like I said, I was uh, I would be petrified and I'd have all up and down roller coaster emotions. It would and it mentally drains you. The more s- stressed you make yourself and if overthink things and overanalyze things, I think you probably put more pressure on your body. Um, as I got older, I do get nervous still. Um, probably definitely not as much. I'll get a shot of nerves maybe a few weeks out or with most fighters, you smell that liniment in the gym and you get, whoa, mm. sudden, sudden nerves, mm. itch um, Weighing, I might get a little bit, bit of nerves. And um, probably going to a, going to the venue the night of the fight, I get I get nerves. And um, and as soon as that bell rings, or like most most people, will let's go then. So it's definitely not as bad as when I first started. I've definitely learned to control it. Um, you know, but it, nerves are good. You have to have nerves. I could write probably like an hourly checklist on him about three days out. You know, I could tell you what emotion is going to take place <laughs> and, <laughs> and go through it like that. I can, uh, Brody's someone who could just sit out the back and just like stretch his arms behind his back and just walk out. And I'm like, you've got to warm up. Like it just doesn't, you know, he's so calm that I actually worry how calm he is. Yeah. Um, because I was someone that had to hit like 10 rounds before I went out and feel like I was, you know, at the very end, had to re, you know, reload up and fight all over again. And he's, and I'll be talking to everyone and moving around. And he's just silent, he's just quiet. And you're like, do you want anything? Do you want anything? <laughs> no, nah, we're good. I'm one of those. I'm one of those people where, you know, I, I put my own box on. Um, you know, I put the own, my own back on my face. You know, like just those kind of things. Um, I don't know. I just get. I, I just got used to it. Um, I can tell by his white crew though. I can tell um, when he does that. I can be either whether I've been in the crowd or in his corner. I can tell by that what mood he's in once he's got in the ring. Whether he's just like you know, fuck it, I just want to get it done. Yeah. Um, or if he needs that time to settle in, um, it just it depends. I can see what because he's he's got his main one, but then he has a faster version one. Um, and when that sort of pops out, he's just he just wants in. He just doesn't want him to be bothered with any of it. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's from panic. I try, I tried taking his shirt off once he grabbed it and threw it, and I was like, "Oh, great, here we go." <laughs> <laughs> are you are you superstitious at all, Brody? Like, do you have any little um, rituals or anything that you do like pre-fight? Um, no, I, I I remember a bit when I was younger. It's going to be funny. It's a funny thing. When I was younger, I'd, I I was massively superstitious. I'd probably wear the the same pants. Um, same undies. I'd eat a, a day of a fight. I would eat a packet of Alfredo pasta. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my little stupid, you know, secrecy things I did. Um, you know, like. Um, but as I got older, no, I actually don't. The, the only thing I don't is superstitious to me is my mom con. Yeah. Um, I think Elise has put mine on once. I never do that. And it's that's just something for me that um, that's probably my only superstition now. It's not a woman thing. It's just um, it's your you know, moncon, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just. I don't thing. touch it. I don't yeah. touch it. I don't go near it. He places it in the fight bag. Um, last, he opens the bag up, hangs it up first. I won't take it down for him. Like I just leave it alone. Yeah. It's, you know, I touched it. Don't get me wrong. He goes to work, and I'm all over it. Um, but. <laughs> I, I sent it away to, to, to get updated with some some of his um special items on it and 
um, you know, things like that. But it hangs it hangs up in the house, and and he's the only one. Yeah, yeah, but it. that's that's as I got older, like this, I don't think you know, I find the pants don't make you fight better. You know, the the, the undies you're fighting don't make you fight better. It's it's you really, like any any like kids with soccer boots. Parents go buy three hundred dollar soccer boots, think they're going to be superstar players, but it's the person in the shoes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, De- definitely. Um, and Brody, um, I know you've had over seventy fights. Uh, you pretty much fought um all the best fighters Australia had to offer you in your weight division. Um, and then I start. I actually started following following you when you were in Samui. Can you tell us why you decided yeah. to pack up and move the whole family to Thailand uh, to pursue your dream? Yeah. So, um. I wanted to always go to Thailand pretty much as soon as I finished high school. Um, it was always a dream of mine, but it just, it, it, for some, I don't know, for some reason, it never, it never eventuated. Um, so I got a trade and I did my trade. And um, then I met, you know, I was having fights in Australia, but I was having one, two fights a year. It was never enough. I, mean, I, I wanted to fight once a month if I could, um, being greedy. Um, you were turning into a pad holder. Yeah, I felt like I was turning into a trainer really young. Yeah. And not what I wanted. I wanted to fight. That's all I wanted to do. Um, but then, you know, when I met Elise, um, you know, I told her what I've always wanted to do. I was still at a young, only probably at 21. Um, and she goes, all right, cool. And the next day she goes, book your plane ticket for six weeks in Thailand. I'll meet you over there in a month. Go do what you have to do. Um, pretty much kicked me out the door. Um, had a fight over there and then they come over for a couple of weeks um, and then they, the kids and the lease really enjoyed it so we decided I think it was the following year we did a three month stint um, we took the boys out of school or well, the school was awesome they said that's the best thing you could do for kids this age doing a worldly you know it, it's just it's massively you know an advantage to kids to get to see the I world correct, I correct that we were going to do weekly school yeah That's one of the good things about technology now, isn't it? You can you can video call them, whereas back in the days you'd have to make an international phone call from your landline and it would cost an absolute fortune and no one else could use the phone. Now you just no. use your internet data, your internet data is included, you can you can video That's call crazy. people wherever they are in the world. I wonder what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Oh, yeah. Bloody hologram. <laughs> we'll be able to teleport. Um, yeah. And what made you specifically choose uh, Samui and the WE, WMC gym to live and fight out of? Yeah, so um, the owner, um, the owners, I should say, um, Ralph Beal and Stephen Fox, um, I've known them both since I was um, probably about nine, ten years old. Um, I first met Stephen in Australia when um, I fought on a fight show um, at the Adamoga Pub, I think it was in 1999. Okay, that's a really long time ago. Um, and twenty years ago, a high team over where I think it was Kurt Finlayson, um, Kurt Finlayson fought Santi from Eminent Air. I think it could have been Soren as well um, as a FUFM. And you know, I knew he had his gym over there. Probably about. Four, three years later, I got asked to fight for Australia at the Isma World Games. Um, that, this was back before they did the juniors one. They just had um, uh, just they were all together, the kids and the adults. Um, and then I decided to go there and I stayed a couple of weeks. And 
yeah, and then I and I knew Ralph really well because I um I fought one of his, his boys and he was the English coach and yeah, it's just you know they they looked after me even though I wasn't part of their team. Um, they were really nice. They they were so inviting and yeah, so. You know, I'd want to go somewhere where I felt safe as a young kid. So, yeah, I chose there. I mean, it's the perfect place and the perfect lifestyle for you with a family. You get to train in the mornings, you know, Koh Samui, pick your, pick your beach, what beach you want to go to during the daytimes yeah. or if you just want to... Did you did you go to the beach much or were you more just sleeping during the daytime and that sort of thing? Um, yeah, kind of like... I would, I would get up pretty early in the morning. I'd go for a 10K run before training. Um, then I'd train, do our training, and then I'd actually drive the boys to school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was mum's taxi. I was the taxi, so I'd drive the boys to school, and then I would come home. Elise would force me to the beach because I hated sun. <laughs> <laughs> you needed a chain. You've not lived in Thailand to be white. Probably the whitest person there. <laughs> um, there for a couple of hours, come back for sleep, and then pick the boys up from school, then go back to train and do, do it all over again. Hey, were you there? Were you training there when there was a Brazilian guy called Tiago? Tiago, yeah, yes, yes, we were. That was when I, yeah, when we were there, Tiago, all the Brazilian boys were training there. Um, Tiago and Jefferson from Brazil, um, Conrado from Brazil, and Eddie Vendetta yep. from Colombia, like yep. all those boys. Um, we still stay in touch with a lot of them. What about, um, was Zidoff fighting at that time, or no, was he just more interested in DJing? No, I think Zidoff was fighting at that time. Um, Tom was still fighting at that. Um, just, I think, when we did our either our six-week or our three-month stint, Tom was still fighting for the WMC. Well, Tom was the first person to ever hold Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was my first fight trainer and Elise's. Um, he was still training there at the time. I knew Tom for a very long time. Um, but when we first met, went back for the to live... Um, Fighting Davey, Knockweed Davey's brother, was my pad holder. Yeah. He's my trainer. Um, and then uh, I think he he left for family, and, and I've got a, a, another type trainer called Jack. He's, he's about my age, and, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's an awesome trainer. He's a stadium, stadium fight, and he still fights now, and I think his young older brother's actually in Sydney at the moment. Oh, okay. yeah. awesome. Yeah. What's um yeah. so was Pitang was Pitang your your favourite or, or your preferred pad holder when you when you're in Samui? Yeah, for me he was because um because I, I like I like to box and he was a, he was actually a boxing he he did throw boxing as well as Muay Thai so he did a lot of boxing um and with some of the people he worked with he worked he was Paul Swinski's pad holder yeah he was Tom's pad holder he was um uh, Jabba Jabba. Uh, Jabba. Jabba Askarov, pad holder, um, and some of the names that he, he's trained, like, I, I couldn't say no, and he, he's just so, like, such a good pad holder, very smart pad holder, and he's only a small man, but man, he felt like 150 kilos when he'd get around your neck and clinch. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, 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 it's good when you get a pad holder that you just gel with straight away, sometimes there's nothing worse yeah. than you get a pad holder and... They're holding it, and you go, you're like, okay, is it a punch or an elbow? Is it a, is it a kick yeah. or a knee? And then you don't, you don't get a lot out of it because you're sitting there going, well, that was a shit session. Yeah, I agree. Um, and there's so much passion in his holding. Mm-hmm. I just, I just picture like instantly. Um, you know, I was always around with videos and taking photos, and just uh, the passion that would pour out of him, even if he asked for the same combo, you know, a hundred times. You know, he had so much passion behind it. Um, it was, it was, you know, he became, he was like part of our family. He had a son, yeah. um, bunk on. He used to hang out with our boys and actually come stay in our room all the time. Um, you know, at the night time comes in our room and have lengthy chats with Brody about God knows what half the time. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, there was the language there. <laughs> so I think we'd bury it, but, um, you know, it, it was just a lot like a family. It yeah. It was really cool. I remember he just, he would just teach you some really cool little tricks. Like I remember... Uh, when I did a one-on-one with him once, he, he would he I threw a teep, and he would just usually you teep someone in the stomach and they're facing square on you, but he would just do the slightest movement where he'd 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 move like his his middle part of his body from his hips to his stomach, just move it to the right a little bit, and your teep would like slide yeah. off and you would miss him, and it was just like little things like that. I was like, dude, like fuck me, I yeah. I never even knew that, and I would throw a teep, and he would just 
move his body to the left or the right slightly and I would just slide off and instead of having that nice tape I'd like sit there and overextend yeah. and then he'd just get me and I'm just like geez this is debilitating an 86 yeah. kilogram against like a 50 kilogram right. getting yeah. smashed and it's ridiculous like the, the, the tires like they're so they're you know unbelievable in the sport and you know I think as, as Westerns you probably overthink a lot of things but you watch it and a lot of the things they do is simple but it's just it's just nothing but pure aggression and skill that uh, and i love watching tie show i could sit there and watch tie fight i don't really watch um like um many for me personally i don't watch many westerners fight i watch a lot of ties versus tie fight yep um, um that's why I, I, I enjoy that more um, there are a few people i will watch um that i really enjoy um but mainly i watch you know the tie fight because you can't get any more purer than that. I call it Brody porn because I go to sleep at night and he's got his phone rolled over and he's trying to like cover himself up and he's and I'm hearing like the music and then I wake up in the morning and if it's the weekend and we've managed to have a sleep in, I wake up and I hear the same sound because he's woken up and he started watching. I don't even know where he finds all these fights, but um, he's constantly watching. So yeah, it's called Brody porn. <laughs> Brody <laughs> <I'm> porn. <fighting>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, but we, we say to um, all our customers at work that, you know, it's, it's, if you're not as trainers and gym owners that encouraging your students to go to Thailand and train, mm -hmm. then you're seriously holding them back because you, you learn so, so, so much more yeah. over there. And, you know, we feel like, you know, how long we've been around it and, you know, the things that Brody picks up on things, he's so technical, he's brought so much back with him and it's just natural to him. Um, but you've got to go over there. Like yeah. you've got to you like, get experience for yourself. Yeah, you've got to know what it's like over there, and you've got to be in their hands and and trust them and do those you know double training and lay on the beach by day and you know one day you're gonna have that energy to train again in the afternoon. You do it and you know sit at markets at night and eat and just talk about it and support each other and go to fight shows and mm. you know you've got to do it. And I think for anyone who enjoys Muay Thai or is it learning it or considering fighting that they should they should you know get over there and, and do a stint and just fall in love with it definitely and like you don't you don't even have to fight like even if you just enjoy training like i i tell them just just go man because i bet you when you come back you'll probably want to have a fight and you'll find that their training is upped a hundred percent but i also yeah. find that just going to thailand they you just you, they just teach you little tricks that it's just yeah. it just comes with experience, and that's there's nothing else that that anyone else can teach you. It's just experience. You know, you can have twenty, thirty fights. That's that's good, and that's a lot. But ties having one hundred, two hundred, three hundred fights. They just they teach you these. They just do these little subtle things, and you just like hang on, rewind that. Show me what was that again? Yeah, exactly. And it's simple though. Like when you and then when you break it down, you like, it's really not that hard. It's just it's you know when you've had three hundred plus fights, I guess you pick up on things. Yeah, and I just I sometimes I think people get the wrong idea because they might think oh I'm gonna go to Thailand I'm gonna learn this and this and this but at the same time you do learn a lot but on the other hand it's nothing but just repetition repetition if not you're gonna be doing things a lot more than what you're doing so you you know you might you might kick the bag a hundred times at the end of your class in Australia whereas uh, whereas you've done your massive session and they go three hundred kicks each leg then two hundred tapes and you're like Jesus Christ I'd never in my life picture myself doing <laughs> yeah. this but you just do it yeah 100 percent. that was me my my trainer my um uh, jack uh the young one he uh when i was training for lumpini he would um he made me run 10k morning and afternoon and he would get on, on scooter, scooter <laughs> as they do yeah he'd follow me but on the last kilometer he, he sat on a speed I, I don't know what it was the speed on his motorbike but i had the same up with it yeah. If I didn't, he would make me turn around and go back and do it again. <laughs> oh, and I've got these videos between rounds that he would make Brody put him up on his shoulders and walk around the ring between rounds so Brody didn't get a break. And it was hilarious. But, you know, it was intense, but it was hilarious. It's good fun. Yeah, at the time you're like, this sucks and I hate you. But afterwards, yeah. and you, you're like, all right. I know why he did that. I, I, I'm not going to yeah. thank you, but I appreciate why he did that for me. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, like, I remember the first time I ever watched you fight um, in Samui. You fought against a top tie. I can't remember his name. 
uh, from Bangkok. But it was on the show that Blockow fought on, but at the time he couldn't actually technically fight because all that stuff was going on with Paul Pramuk where he ended up doing like a 20-minute wire crew and then fought some South African guy with MMA gloves and kickboxing pants on. Yeah. Um, on that show but yeah that was the first time I've watched your fight and I don't think you got the win but you went five rounds and it was quite a very good fight was that one of the first times that you fought a, a top class world opponent like that yeah that was that was he was a good tie I remember um, it was a it was a four man actually and um, yeah I lost that fight but um, I think the, the guy I fought he just about probably a month uh, previous he just fought uh, at Lumpini and he actually fought the guy that was also in the Super 4 with us. Um, but he lost to the guy that ended up winning. Um, yeah, he was good. Like, he was only young too, but, man, like, different level when you when you fight those stadium ties. Uh, you know, it's a whole different ball game. But I love fighting ties because I find they're dangerous. Yeah. And you got to be on your game. So I think you. I, I learned so much fighting ties and, you know... Um, I can't. I don't even know how many I fought now, but um, yeah, I just really, I really, you know, know, there's some people that really enjoy just fighting. I I think it's their style that I enjoy um, because I know I'm not a fast fighter in the sense like um, I I I go at my own pace, not someone else's pace, and I think my pace is my pace. That's why I really enjoy fighting them. How do you? How did you find um, fighting in Thailand as opposed to Australia? Like, um, what are some of the pros and cons? I guess you could say of of each that for you personally. Yeah, I know. I struggled when I come back to Australia after living so long in Thailand, fighting a Westerner again. Um, I think it was. I find say with, you know, I found um, people like people want to see Nokia, you know, um, and I'm, I, I like to throw. Power. I throw everything I got. It might not be technical sometimes, but I try and throw every shot and not get a shot, um, which is probably not a good thing and a bad thing for, at times. But I found with the ties, um, you had, I, I don't know, I just enjoyed it because um, every shot they threw was going to be dangerous. Yeah. And they were trying to take your head clean off. But I find in Australia, um, it's like people wanted to win on points, they didn't want to win by stopping people, if you know what I mean. So that was the difference for me and just the work rate alone, to be honest, it caught me off guard when I first fought um, back in Australia. It was just it was just the work rate. I wasn't used to that high intensity work rate then in Thailand, you know, lazy round one, a bit of a lazy round two, three and four is hard at it and then halfway through five you start tapering off again. So it, yeah, it was definitely a massive shock when I come back. Um, so have you found that you've sort of adapted a bit better now that you've been back in Australia f- for a bit longer or does it still sort of, are you still sort of setting your, in the tie way? Yeah, I, I definitely, it took, it's taken me a little while to, to get out of that, that mould of, you know, that slow tie style. Um, I probably still struggle with it every now and then. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I, would, I do, I would struggle with it every now and then, so um, but you know that's 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 the, that's the fight game. You got to adapt and you got to adjust and and you got to get back to the drawing board and just just change up little things. I think that's 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 the fun part part about being being a fighter and being an athlete. You got to you find new avenues on how to improve yourself. Yeah, definitely, mate, definitely. Um, and with your with your three boys, when you you made the move to Samui for three years. How did they find uh, living in another country and, you know, having to make new friends, uh, the language barrier and adapting just to a different culture and, and way of life? Um, I reckon they absolutely loved it. Um, they had no issues. I thought leaving, you know, a country that they would you know, known so well, gone to school here and could communicate with people. Um, they were like, see ya, out of there, couldn't wait to go. Um, because they had already made some friends over there, I think for them it was like going home to see another family. Um, they loved being on camp. That was a big part of it. Actually, their very first day at international schooling, um, the, the first thing they did was get dressed for school and go out and take photos with every one of the trainers. <laughs> and their big school photo was with all the trainers ready to start work in the morning and these you know, three little boys all in their school uniforms. 
um, ready to go off to school. So um, just, you know, that was life. Going to school, they made friends from all around the world. Um, the language barrier wasn't just high. It was, gosh, German, <laughs> Russian, French, Italian. So these kids would be at someone's house having a sleepover that we couldn't even communicate with the parents. We just got, see you tomorrow. And we're like, where do you live? See you tomorrow. <laughs> okay, see you tomorrow. Um, you know, it was, it was like, have you got Wi-Fi? Because we need to get in touch with them because we have no idea where you've just gone. Um, it was scary that way. But, you know, they joined the football academy, which they spent, you know, which is soccer. Um, they spent, you know, day in, day out doing that themselves. That's always been their passion. Um, so they loved it. They went to international school, hung out all afternoon with their mates and then, did it all over again. They can they could all read, write, and speak Thai. I love looking at all the textbooks that were just Thai. They did one hour, one hour pure purely of just Thai every single day. Um, so they were so handy. We would go to parts of um, Thailand, you know, and stay in areas that there was just you know no not a lick of English, and we could have the kids read all the signs and and speak to the taxi drivers, and um, they wouldn't take any shit because they they couldn't fault the kids. Yeah. Um, you know, we'd be sitting in little restaurants and, you know, everyone looking and then I'd walk up to especially our little blonde haired, blue eyed boy and just, you know, and they'd be just like, you know, we live here and they'd be questioning, no, we go to, you know, Panya D International Samui and, you know, they'd just question them and they just couldn't fault the kids. So it was, it was awesome. We didn't get ripped off at all. <laughs> just made sure I just said, speak to the boys because it made us quite lazy with learning the language. Yeah. Um, because we kind of got the kids to do it all for us. <laughs> Some of the some of the uh, good points of having kids, yeah. Sorry. That's some of the good points of having kids. Just get them to do it for you. Yeah, kids, kids, kids um pick up on things better than adults. <laughs> it was so easy for them, and yet we actually had um one of my male best friends over there. He did we did Thai lessons with him. He was himself um a Falun and. He had been living there for like six years, so he did this thing every weekend when the kids were at soccer that we would um go and sit down with him at a cafe and, and, and learn Thai. I think the most that we learned was some rude words and, and then gave up on it. That's most people do. Kids, because they they just absorb things like sponges. It's it's crazy. Oh, um, and well, they had to learn how to play soccer speaking the language because all their coaches were either Thai or um, Italian. Yeah. Um, uh. So... They, they, you know, pass the ball, shoot, kick, do all that sort of stuff. Um, everything was in Thai because they would go to all these tournaments. They would be on a mini bus and off to Phuket and all, all different places. Um, and Brody and I, gosh, we scooted sometimes seven, eight hours on a scooter just to try to follow them and go watch one game. And um, they would go off and they'd be in the middle of all these places and they had to speak the language to communicate with their coaches. Mm. And did all your boys um, have fights in Thailand or just a couple of them? Yeah, so our eldest, Will, he, he fought. He had about seven fights, but um, he had one in Thailand and one in Malaysia. So before we, he was about 10, he, when he was younger, he had a couple of fights. And then as a, I think he was about eight and he got into video games and he half assed the fight. <laughs> and I said, no, that's it. I'm not training now when you're half assing. He had a year off. He begged me when they started Nationals. He wanted to fight Nationals. Um, I said, all right, well, you'll do it my way. And he did. He won Nationals. Um, so we were about to move to Thailand um, not long after um, the Worlds were going to be, when the Worlds were going to be. Um, so he got to train in Thailand for the month or two months or four months or six weeks before he went to Malaysia and he won the ISMA. Uh, so he won a gold medal. Um, and then he basically, he quit after, <laughs> after he, he finished on top. Yeah. And, um, and then our middle one, he fought when he was about seven years old on our three month stint. Um, so he, my rule was, if you're naughty, you don't train. And he's our spirited one. So he didn't train very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's always naughty. But he was, he was just a, he was just a freak when it comes to just being a fit kid. So he did about two sessions. And, um, I booked the fight behind Brody's back. Yeah. <laughs> and then I said, yeah, and then I said to Elise, Elise was begging on for no elbows. I said, Elise, this is Thailand. They don't give a shit. <laughs> I went two rounds without elbows. Um, and yeah, so he fought, he fought full time rules. Um, 
uh, uh, you know, uh, Lady Boxing down there at the markets at, at, at Lamai there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a cracker. He probably earned more money in that fight than I do. <laughs> Um, he, he performed Brody's Fly Crew. Um, the crowd just went off at that, just yeah. seeing, and I think he got a lot of respect from the, his opponents, um, trainers as well for that. Mm. Um, he didn't. There wasn't. There wasn't a single elbow thrown until the tie was losing, um, and then the tie went into the clinch and snuck this elbow in. I can just remember Dre looking at us and just got that look of like, I'm so sorry, Mum. And then just it just it was on it was every every single elbow he could possibly think of. I don't even know how he had seen these elbows. <laughs> um, we still have it on video. We pull it out every now and again, or post it every now and again. Um, and all you hear is me. Keep your hands up, Dave. Dave, keep your hands up. <laughs> um, it was a beautiful photo of me and um, Pai Dang. Pai Dang, you know, he, he he trained all of us, and it's a good photo of me with my finger in Dre's face, yelling, and then Pai Dang's up in the up in the air with his hands in the air, big smile on his face. It was, oh, have his teeth yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. it, was cool. it was actually a really cool night. And we had like we had like Zidoff there and um We had the whole thing. And yeah. Hannah Rong uh, Long, the head trainer of the Lemoy, you know, um Tiago, um Quinton who actually Fork out did that demo with. Yep. He was there too. Like yeah, there was a massive crew there and it was it was awesome. Oh that would have been that would have been ace Especially having yeah. having all them guys there, um. So yeah. once you guys arrived back in Australia and you got settled in, you decided to open up your very own gym on the Sunshine Coast called Team Stol- yeah. Team Stolter Muay Thai. Can you tell me how that all came about? And was that always the plan to eventually open up your own gym and, and move back to Australia? Yeah. So I, when we moved back to Australia, I I went, I was gonna I had a year off um, fighting just because. It was just so full on over there that I kind of needed a mental break, and I think my body needed the break. Yeah, sure. Just thrashing it for years. Yeah. Um. So I took. I thought it was nearly going to be a year, and then I got a call from, um, uh, from Sky, um, that runs Rebellion. Um, Don Miller actually um, helped me out there, and um, he asked, well, "Do you want to fight in November on my show?" I was like, "Hell yeah, I do." And it was against the Sitman Chai Thai um, here. Yep. Um, Sitman Chai. And I was like, well, I better start training. So I, um, Elise and I actually trained that fight in our garage. Yep. <laughs> so that's not a joke. It was like lawn mowers. <laughs> it's like the yeah. grease that we had to cover up with a piece of ply. It was the kids arguing in the house and us yelling out between rounds. It was so, so was, fun. I was kicking pads on concrete in it. Oh. Wet box. Um, and yeah, I'll. I'll I did. I fought really well that fight, and then I had so many people ask us, "Oh, so you're training? You're training back in Australia now?" I'm like, well, no, not really. I only have a garage, um, and you know, we had so many people trying begging us to begging us to train. Um, we got this massive opportunity. Where a friend we knew he had a spare spare shed next to his. And he's like, "Mate, I've got a spare shed there. You guys can guys can use it." Um, so, you know, I, I eventually wanted to open up our own gym, um, but it was probably a bit earlier than we than we probably wanted. But yep. um, and looking back, I, I don't regret it. Um, I, feel, I think it was the best thing we've done. I always wanted to do it. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much how it happened. And, yeah, we just... We had one set of pads. We yeah. had no money saved. We borrowed uh, $2,000 off Brody's auntie which we paid back, you know, $100 a week once we, you know, had money coming in. Um, and we just went, wow, I was I was down the Gold Coast buying second mats, measuring, you know, mm. 60 mats every single corner, um, getting them for $11 instead of $40. Um, I'm, a, I'm one of those people that if there's a world is away and um, $2,000, we opened up a place that looked like we probably, you know, put ten or $15,000 into it. Um, we have um, Nick from Punish, you know, we've got, you know, him supporting us up here and, you know, it helps us out with um, with our training gear and, you know, always always keeps in touch with, um, you know, new products and gets ready to try them out. So, mm. you know, we're really lucky to have that. I mean, we have a cage, like, we don't, we're not meant to have a cage, we're meant to have a ring, but we have a cage because the space that was in, their cages in it and the rule was is the cage had to stay, so... 
we've just made the cage work the last two years. Um, our fighters don't know what it's like to have a corner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're just it's a round circle until they actually get in the ring. So Mason, Mason not going corners, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was just so nice to have a space um, to actually, like even for Brody, like when we weren't open in the mornings, but, you know, he had a fight that, you know, him and I could go in there and it was in our garage where we couldn't hit pads in the morning because of our neighbours and, you know, it was nice to show you, wow, we've also got this too for him to be able to train mm. more. So, yeah, that's, that's how sort of the gym opened up from there. We um, we opened up on the first day not even, not even knowing what was going to happen. We had one of our comedian, um, big comedian friends, um, Troy Kinney, he made an opening you know, video for us to sort of get all over Facebook and things like that, which got some good attention. Um, and yeah, opened the doors that first afternoon, just sort of sat waiting, waiting wondering whether, whether anyone's going to even walk in that door, and they did. It's scary, definitely scary. There's weeks there that, you know, I'd probably have to do a few weekend shifts on the tools just to pay our rent for our shed as well as our house. Um, you know, as, as most as most trainers, people that open up gyms, you know, it's it's bloody hard and you've got to fight for it and you know what well, I'll do it again and I'll do it again and again and again because it's like the we, smartest thing we did. We never we never had like not one person to come in but sometimes people got a PT like yeah. they were just the only ones but you know what we've respected everyone for walking the door because you know they've all come they've all stayed mm -hmm. um and they've all grown with us so they're part of our journey too yeah. Well, I mean, it seems to pay off for you because um, just recently you guys made an announcement that uh, due to popular demand and the growth, you're actually moving into a bigger premises. Yeah, we're, we're tripling, or oh, more than that, we're over tripling our size. I can't even believe that we've lasted as long in our space. There's been some tight squeezes, but um, you know what it's like if you're trying to spar and you're trying to develop a fight team and you've, you've got your beginners in there and you've got everything happening. Our team's been great. We've we all fit in and working together. Our, our kids' classes are just going crazy. But we're trying to do it all that we just need more space. And, you know, we, we amended our prices six months ago to say, you know, this is happening and you get the training for it, but the whole point is we're going to move. Yeah. So when we move, you're actually going to be sort of going, wow, you know, actually we could be paying even more now. Um, but we wanted to just save up every single cent so that we could do what we've done now and, you know, be able to kit out with, you know, new new safe mats, not secondhand rubber ones. We've got the copper foam mats and we've got a ring coming in. We've got the punished corners and canvases and more, uh, bags. more bags and we've got office and kids room and, you know, it's just so nice to just go, well, wow, like we've actually got the facilities um, for those few people that, you know, I sort of want to come but just can't come, but now there's enough space for it and it's going to be safe to spar. And, and we get, and that's how our people are playing, you know, our people that are there with us now, they deserve a bigger space and, you know, they helped us. If it wasn't for them, we, we wouldn't be able to get a bigger space. So, you know, it's, for, for Lisa and I, it's, it's like a thank you in a sense as those folks to get a bigger facility and, you know, newer stuff. And yeah, that's. And we can't wait. We can't. We can't wait to get in there. It's going to be awesome. And it's still us. Like Brody and I are the only two people that um, coach and train in our gym. So we we work our asses off. Like there is there's no one else on board. It's just us. Um, we're not we're not sort of ready to. You know we don't do that whole. You know like teenagers teaching kids and you know we have our boys come in. Our boys are are pretty good before they have to go to like soccer and things like that. They'll come in and you know hold pads for four year olds and and get involved, but that's very much our family feel. And our kids have grown up sitting on the side of the ring eating their dinner. So, you know, they we trust that they're fine with that, but we we just... That's been enough for the kids to know how to teach three and four-year-olds, you know, that sit on, sat on the sideline and watch probably nearly 40 old of my fights. Um, you know, I've, I've got videos of them and pictures of them sleeping in the stadium and then Elisa will nudge them down. Your dad's on and they're awake and they're good for 15 minutes and they go back to sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, look, in the gym, it's Brody and I. You know, Brody's still on tools by day, which hopefully he's not going to be um, soon. I PT in the gym all day and some group classes early in the morning. Brody finishes on the tools, goes straight from straight from work in Brisbane, Gold Coast, wherever he is, straight into the gym to start training either the juniors or our junior fight team. And then we go right up until... You know, eight o'clock at night, where him and I are, you know, walking around like zombies, mopping the gym, and 
and um, sort of cleaning up ready for the next day. So what you've got to do and, you know, hopefully we can settle back and, and um, you know, hire a few people, you know, that we trust along the way. But at the moment, yeah, it's just us digging deep. And that's what you do with small business. Mm. And, you know, if you're handed over too early and start getting people in, that's when, you know, all our love and stuff. Yeah, I just don't want to steer away from, you know, Brody's 21 years of everything that he knows and his knowledge. Um, I just don't want it being changed. Yeah, and sometimes you see or you hear a stories where it goes from a passion just purely to a business and the passion goes out the window. 100%. Yeah, Brody tonight. Like, Brody tonight was with um, a lady, Mandy, you know, her husband, her two kids. They all train at our gym. And, you know, Brody's paired up with her tonight and they're doing combos and working together. Like, you know, he's not, you know, like some gyms, it's like, you know, fighters, egos, this and that, but not. Brody's there and I actually got the camera out walking. I was like, what's for dinner, you two? And what have you cooked? And what have you cooked? And, you know, it's just, that, that, that's our team. Everyone's putting in the effort. And, you know, I don't care who I train with. And, you know, I, if, they're put, if they're putting in effort, I put in effort. And yeah. That's basically how it is. Like, I don't, I don't, everyone's equal in our gym. There's no, there's no egos. I don't like clicks in gym. Your gym is your click. You shouldn't walk into a gym and there'd be five different groups in a gym. There's one group and that's your gym, that's your click. Um, yeah, I don't like people being out past it or felt like them. it's not comfortable or not welcoming. You know, we've got some boys in our gym, they're massive boys, you know, covered from the neck down in tattoos and people walk and go, oh my God, what have I got myself into? You walk Someone up once said it looks like a rape dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk in, she goes, oh my God, what have you brought me to? And you walk in and they go, and they're the most, the most, not nice natured like humans you could ever meet they're like oh okay so i did ju- judge a book by its cover <laughs> oh god you walk into our gym and you can't even get away from walking and everyone's yelling out to you yeah <laughs> um yeah because your gym it seems to be you know really taking off um i saw a post a while back um last year on instagram um that you're also teaching students um at a christian christian college um, and you wrote how you're looking to pass your, your knowledge on to others because Muay Thai changed both your lives. In what ways has it Muay Thai changed both your lives for the better? For, for me personally, um, you know, I, I grew up with uh, single parents. And um, for me, I found, you know, and I moved away from my big family up north and I just moved down here with my dad. So it's just me. And, you know, I probably struggled for a little bit making friends and, you know, being the short kid, get picked on. Um, so it's probably, for me, if it wasn't for Muay Thai, you know, in a sport where, especially Thai, it's like everyone's a small fighter. No one, no one cares how big you are. No one cares how small you are. Um, for me, it probably, it, it definitely, I made so many awesome friends that I still make with now. I got to travel the world, you know, definitely build up uh, my self-esteem and my confidence in myself. Um, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't think like what the sport has done for me enough in the in, in that way to how it's changed my life. Um, you know, I met my wife through Muay Thai, you know, so I, 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 I can't fault it <laughs> for me. Yeah. Oh, um, no, um, I don't know where to go from there. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really nice to hear. Um, for me, I, I find it just something I like the empowering, um, whether it's for um, the kids, because I can see what a difference it's made in, in you know, our boys. I know things that have happened at school for them that they've turned around and they've been pushed or shoved and, you know, well, you know, well, why didn't you do something back? And they're like, it was nothing. It was just nothing. I let them get in trouble because... It gave them the confidence that they, like, they know that if something were to go, like, worse than what was just going on right there, they could handle themselves, but yeah. they also can handle a bit before it gets there yeah. and make someone else look like a dick. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's just that, I like seeing that within my family. Um, I, I, love, I, I love the fact that my son's 16 and, you know, there's girls at school that won't date him because they're scared of his mum. <laughs> and that's, I've like that. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, well, what impression have they got? Like, I have no <laughs> idea what they're looking at because I don't post anything like that. Come on. Um, you know, so I just think that, yeah, same thing as Brody. I, I grew up with, you know, a bit of a broken family and, 
you know, I didn't, I personally didn't get to do sports because I wanted to do the boys' sports and my mum was against that. So I sort of sat back as almost a housewife, um, my mother, at a young age. So it was really cool because I didn't, I really wanted to be an ice skater and that's really what I wanted to do. And because I didn't get to reach levels that I wanted to, meeting Brody, and I can still remember sitting at a dinner one night next to him when him and I weren't anything and he was, he was cutting weight and he like had this one meal and he was just so nice and he, he like offered me some of his food and I'd never had a conversation with him but seen him for about three years in the gym but wouldn't talk to him because I was way too nervous. And um, I loved watching his dedication. He spoke to me and told me where he had travelled and things that he'd done and how he had had an eaten all day because he really wanted to have this celebration dinner and, and eat this Italian food and yet he still gave me food off his plate to share. And I just loved listening to this guy that, like, wanted to do something and has committed his whole life to it. Like, I absolutely love that. And I guess I saw something that, like, I missed out on that in life. So I really love that. And then when I fell in love with the sport, I guess that's what I wanted to do. So whether it's at a later age, um, I've wanted it just to be a huge part of my life. Um, the more kids that we can get into the gym, for almost like Brody's story, for having it as just something that they can love and do and, you know, have them build, you know, more confidence through it. And, you know, I love getting the women into the gym. Um, I love their faces when they throw those first punches and you teach them their first elbow. Um, I love that the women come in and then suddenly they're bringing their husbands and their husbands are getting shocked by what they're doing. And, <laughs> um, I just think it's awesome. And I love the travel. I love that we can go on Facebook and make that announcement like we did last night that we're, that we're, you know, moving gyms. Like, we feel okay we're moving gyms. It's exciting for us. But, you know, the people in the Muay Thai community that have messaged us and written to us and, and that have supported us since the day that we've opened, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's a message or coming up and, you know, visiting us and, you know, ensuring even though it's small, we've been included the whole time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But the thing for us, for us personally, you know, we've had those, like, sort of, um, for uh, Bidla and um, Selby from Perth being massive mentors um, for us, you know, they both come and, you know, they had fighters here on the coast and, you know, they come train, trained at our gym, it's like, mate, you can have the keys to the door, we don't care, like, it's yours, <laughs> that's how we felt, because they just helped us so much in, in business, how to run a gym, um, you know, how to juggle things, um, you know, Britta cornered me for my fight in against uh, Tia and, and Selby, uh, I uh, cornered my fight again down in Rebellion. Um, so them two guys, for us personally, like I'm really grateful for with um, just with the experience in the fight game and how long they've been around. It was a massive, massive help for us. I think, and that... even like when fights come up, like Riddler just got Brody that fight with Non Rose. You know, it was it was put through when obviously he was questioned about you know who would be, you know, at the calibre to fight someone like, you know, Non Rose being the name and all that sort of thing and Riddler boom, no hesitation, straight to Brody. I was gonna bring that I was gonna bring that up, but seeing as we're on that subject, let's talk about that now. Um yes. Non Rose. In December last year you fought the famous ladyboy Thai boxer Nong Rose uh, in Malaysia on the Z one promotion. Uh, that was a fifty three kilogram title fight over five rounds. Tell us about yep. tell us about that whole experience and and what that was like. Yeah, so uh, it was it was it ended up ended up being three rounds, which annoyed oh. me because I wanted it to be five rounds. Sorry, three rounds, my bad. Um, yep. Yeah, no, no, there used to be. So I fought a couple of times over there, and it was always five. But for some reason, they made it three. Um, you know, it was cool. Like everyone's like, oh, you're fighting on rise. Like, yeah, so what? It's just another person. Like, I, I don't care. Yeah. Um, for me, like, it doesn't matter. Um, fight to fight. Um, weapon, weapon. But once you're in there, it's, it's not as, it wasn't as bad as you think. It's, he, he's a lot smaller than you think. Um, I thought I was actually bigger. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was, it was a pretty slow fight. I was, you know, I just felt like I was starting to get into into it a bit, and then boom, it was over three rounds. So I was stopping the clinch. Yeah, yeah, they weren't letting me clinch. I felt like I could dominate the clinch if they let me, because I could just, you know, when you can feel power, and you're in the clinch, and 
I felt I would have had them in the clinch. Yep. But they just kept stopping it, which which annoyed me a bit. But yeah, it is what it is. That's the my game. Shit happens. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a crowd favourite thing, and you know that's cool. Like you know, you get that in different situations. So no, like you know, being you know, there's nothing on it. But, yeah, it is what it is. Brody already holds the title for the Z1, um, fifty three point five kg. Um, so you know, he was just hoping to sort of grab the the five five hundred grams below it belt and yeah. be done with it. We thought he had done enough, but you know, being the name, it's just got to be more convincing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And I wanted to ask, as gym owners, um, what yep. have, what have been some challenges you guys have faced along the way? You know, um, as most people only see the end results, a uh, nice place to train, meeting other people at the gym, like what you guys did touch on. What what are some of the things that people don't see? Yeah, well, see, I'm um, I'm still on the field, so I'm a, I'm a plasterer by trade. I still I still do over forty five hours, if not more, a week on the tools that probably most people don't know. So before before um, I work really early in the morning, I start early because I work probably an hour or two hours away sometimes. Yep. Um, so before five, I'd get up at 2 a.m. and I'd go and do my 10K run and then I would come home and I'd, I'd drive down to Brisbane, which would be an hour and a half, or the Gold Coast, which is two hours, to work a 10-hour day and then I'd drive back um, and then I'd train myself. Now I do the same thing, but now I come back and I'm in the gym from 4 a 4 p.m. to about 8 o'clock at night, training other people and training myself. Um, so, you know, it's, people wonder what, people in the gym go, man, you need to go home to bed. I was like, yeah, but I'm here, I'm in the gym, and I'm happy here. That's where I'm, that's where I'm at peace, is at, in the gym. It's where, it's my natural habitat, <laughs> so yeah. to speak. Um, you know, we got three kids. Um, they all play sport. They all high level soccer players. So, you know, we travel actually up and down Queensland for their football and on every Sunday. So we could be in Toowoomba, which is like a three hour drive, or we could be in Bundaberg, which is a three hour drive for us. So at least I actually don't have a weekend. Um, we work seven days a week, whether it be in the gym or with our with our kids. You know, that our two priorities is gym. Kids. Well, you picture like when Brody was fighting Long Rose in Malaysia, I was here, um, had got Brody into the prep of that, sent him away on the plane, and then I still had two kids that were fighting at Cyan Cup, one being our middle boy who's decided now to quit MPL soccer, hmm. and um, now just he wants to fight. So he was having his first fight, you know, for the first time in Australia. We had another young nine-year-old fighting. Um, Brody was fighting, and then Dre was playing 12 hours apart. At the same time, we had one son that was playing uh, a high elective futsal up in Bundaberg, and then we had another one doing a three-day tournament on the Gold Coast for futsal. And you just turn around, you try to repeat that to somebody, and they sort of look at you like you're a crazy mad woman. And <laughs> they turn around and say, do you know the reason why it looks like I wet my pants in those photos? Because I was sweating balls, all right? <laughs> I was so hot. Like, and I had shit going on. I had broke on FaceTime once the kids had finished fighting, and... You know, you've got every person looking at you asking for help and sometimes you just got to turn around and say, I'm all good. Yeah, and some people still myself. And some people didn't know I was actually on watching our boy, boys fight on FaceTime in the crowd because I was sitting in a hotel room in Malaysia and I was like, I can't miss it. I was trying every reason to get back on the flight, but I could have said, you know, I was actually watching it live. <laughs> yeah, but when it comes to gym things, all it is is just, you know, small business owners. And yeah. There's no no pat on the back. It's what you've got to do. Like, yeah, you, know, you know, you've just got to knuckle down. Um, you know, we've been really, really, really lucky with customers. Um, I say if people have come and tried and not come back, it's because they don't fit in and that's fine. They're welcome anywhere else but in our gym and that's a fantastic thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I PT by day. I hold, I can hold up to... Oh, six, seven hours of pads a day um, and, you know, you just, it's just life now. Mm. You know, I got to the end of Christmas last year, I turned around and I, I looked at one of my customers, you know, good friends, and I just said, why don't I have an office job? <laughs> like, why do people get me all day? Like, why do people sweat on my face and in my mouth and in my eyes? Why do I do this? Why am I standing here? As a wife and a mother, why am I letting people bash me every day? And then they're like, she's like, you're bashing me. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but then, you know, we took a holiday and came back and I was like, oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. 
yeah, wouldn't 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 change it for anything. No. Um, and Elise, I know you're Brody's pad holder. Um, as all couples do from time to time, they have disagreements, argue, you know, get the shits with each other. It's all part of relationships. Has that ever happened while Brody has been in a fight camp? And if <laughs> and if so, how, how do you two deal with your differences or, or put it to the side to focus on on the the main task, which is getting Brody ready for a fight? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he cries. No. Um... <laughs> I slap him and he cries. So, and look, it just is what it is. Like, I didn't I didn't mean to be a pad holder. It, it just was one of those, like I said, my necessity, it's my nature. If there's a will, there's a way. And it was like, he got that phone call from Cy when we got back. And it was like, what am I going to do? I was like, get me some pads. Like, I'll do this. Like, you know, I'd held pads for people, but not to the intensity of Brody, especially after his Thailand training. Yeah. It was just a whole new level of forearm bruises. And, and I actually went to class rubber. And I've got, I, well, I did um, have these inserts that went in when I held pads for Brody that gave me an extra inch of padding so that I didn't get, like, I felt sometimes my forearms were just going to snap. Um, but you do get, you know, you adjust to all that. But when it comes to us personally with training, like I said, we do have a very good, you know, this is what we're doing. Being the female, I 100% get it. Um, I'm a bit like a woman who sees a male doctor. I've never seen a female doctor. Like, I get it for Brody that I'm not that male yeah. um, that he needs. So I could tell him to do something, and he's oh, he, yeah, he's <laughs> above me. He knows more than me. Um, I will say, like, he'll turn to anyone in the gym and say, you know, if Elise says, do it, trust me. Like, she knows. Like, you know, she knows because I've, I've been the only person teaching her. So, like... I, I try to, and, you know, he might have to digest it, and I might even send him a text later that day and say, hey, I didn't appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he'll come in the gym that night and go, you're completely right. You know, I, I said, you know, I'm taking that time to put my body on the line for him. I'm limping after he's been kicking. Um, he went into one fight that we spent six weeks doing a big bit of a mix-up, and we decided we're going to throw a spanner in the works and make him a southpaw. <laughs> um, so, you know, my, my back leg that had, you know, not been touched in a long time was battered and bruised of all sorts, and that was through a thigh guard. Um, you know, I've learnt, I've, well, I'm, I'm naturally a South poor anyway, but um, I was trained orthodox, so um, I had to hold South poor but stand orthodox, and, you know, the things that sort of you go through and come up with, it suddenly made me stronger, but... With Brody and I, like, the fight's happened. No, yeah. I shit him, and I know what I'm going to cop for it, is, like, I'll correct him on something, I'll tell him to do something, or I'll miss the pads or something, and I will cop the next juice. It's pretty damn hard. <laughs> um, and now it does, it shits me to tears. Sometimes I'll take it, then I get pissed off, and it just gets harder. Um, or I shut down on him and just, like, talk to him the rest of the round. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, it does enter the gym. Um but we try very hard for it not to. We can we can also understand, though. We can look at each other and I can say, you know, you've had a massive day at work. Like, just don't push yourself today. Like, just don't do it. Go go through the motions. Do what you need to do. Get it done. But just don't, don't push yourself too hard. So by knowing behind the scenes, you know, this is a guy that will still come home, wash up the dishes and check the kids' homework. You know, so I, I know what he's doing, yet some coaches don't know what, you know what they're doing yeah i know what he's doing i know where he's working i know he's working you know physically all day every day so we have that with our fighters got a message today from a guy that's fighting and he was just like i'm going to be on the tools till you know blah blah time so that's all good go home have a rest i'll meet you in the gym in the morning for 30 minutes and i'll hold pads for you yeah like you know just just settle like it's okay i think that- yeah we do I think it's good that you're both like the same size as well because sometimes yeah. there's like you know you get someone I'm in the, yeah or you get someone in the gym like you know imagine if Brody was like ninety kilos he probably wouldn't be able to kick the shit out of the pads as hard as he would. Oh no, no, you have no idea what I hope for. <laughs> you have no idea. I, I PT all day every day in my gym, so I have people come in that some Brody hasn't even met, and I try to occasionally take photos and videos and. Oh no, I've got up to I've got I've got basically between ninety and one hundred and sixty kilos that I hold for. <laughs> yeah, like you have no idea. And there, that's you know some of it's power, some of it's weight. Um, and you can you can imagine holding for people that are learning. Like it's so much harder because yeah. they throw throw stuff everywhere. 
Um, I've got I've got a great customer. He's 64 years old. He trains me two one-hour sessions every single week. He he does animals. He does he does flying um, Superman punches at me. He does like he he runs across. Oh my gosh, it's crazy stuff. Like um, I had a guy that came into the gym to see me for a business purpose for something else, and he watched the last little bit. And I had a um, oh I don't know Mike probably maybe hundred. Hundred, yeah, and he watched him being hard. Yeah, was you know, and teaches all bodybuilding and all that. And you know, there's a lot of trainers that come to me to sort of do that side of it, just to give them a break from the weights. And he just goes, "Oh my god!" He goes, "That's what you do and what you hold." So it's got to be hard. And I said, "Oh, I just don't think about it." I said, "Brody still hits the hardest." Like I, I don't. I, that's so funny. I know that a lot of people find that as an insult, but. I can sort of go, you might be 120 kilos and think you're trying really well at me, but, you know, Brody's technique and style still above and beyond is the hardest that anybody ever hits. Yeah, damn straight. It, it is all about technique. You, you're, you're damn right on that one. Yeah, um, you're holding weight, you're holding swinging punches, you're holding all sorts of things, but, you know, when someone hits proper, properly, and you feel it and your body jumps through it and that's what happens when Brody hits and kicks. Like I had times that I'd, I'd get completely go numb all down one side and had to change the way I stood when he kicked, when he switch kicked. Yeah. Um, purely because of just how much it hurt. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, guys. Um, and, and both you guys have achieved, yeah. you've both achieved a lot. Um, but now that you and Elise have started training your own students, have you set any goals for yourselves uh, or for the gym that you would like to achieve, that you have achieved, and that you are still looking to achieve. Yeah, so definitely, like I'm still, I still, I'm still fighting, um, you know. But at the moment, I'm putting all my effort into you know, into our gym and into our into our students. Um, we definitely didn't expect it to get as big as it did so soon, um, but I can't argue with it either. So. Um, Definitely, probably ahead of what we thought, but to get into a bigger space was well, definitely a five-year goal. But we did it in two years, and you know, um, it was a lot of time and effort. But I, I couldn't be proud of what we've done. Um, you know, goal-wise, um, you know, I want to I want to make a big fight team. Um, I, I love training the kids. I love training kids because you know, if without kids and without the younger ones, you know, our sport's not going to grow. And for me, like. It's it's all about the sport. I, I couldn't I couldn't care. I'll do it for free. You know what I mean? I do it for free. Like I'd love to train the kids. I I want them to enjoy. It. I want them to um I want them to experience what I experience. You know, you get to travel around Australia or the world, and people pay you to fight. Yeah. Like, what what what's better than that? <laughs> but with gym goals, you know, we we've definitely set them. We had it. We had a break over. You know, a much needed three weeks off, and we sort of sat down and and set those goals and you know we want to um by year end you know have a couple of um i know sammy brown did it down at nuggets yeah. like you know a little inter club just for goal setting for you know non-competitive not a real fight but just being able to get in the ring and and do that would love to do that for our members and, and other gyms be able to host that um i personally would like to i like the business side of it as much as i do training so i know you know, down whether it's five to ten years, we want to have more involvement in Muay Thai Queensland. We want to have more involvement um, with even promotions moving down the track. Um, that's that's like a big thing that I'd I'd love to be able to do. Sort of, you know, we just want to for the Sunshine Coast. We really want to um, make Muay Thai a big name. Yeah. Yeah. You got you got yeah. So definitely, like I got the taste of coaching. Properly, properly, when I got the chance to jump on with the junior training team yep. over in Thailand, mm -hmm. and I absolutely loved it. I loved training kids, um, you know, with the coaches there, Leon Spain and Mark Seldon. So, Seldy, you know, I learned so much, like how much we probably slept about three hours a night because there's so much prep that goes into those Isma games, and for those coaches, that I don't think people really realize it. I wanted to throw myself in and go, okay, this is what coaching's all about. You know, I, I look at the paperwork, the weights, and oh my God, it's crazy. I don't know how some of those guys do it. I'm like, man, give me, another, give me some time before I jump into this. So that's definitely a long-term goal too. I don't know where you're going to find the time. I, 
you guys have got all the, you work 45 hours a week then you're doing your your, your gym and then you know you, you make time to have a chat with me and then you're going to do promotion you know you've got you guys have got to sleep as well no nah, you sleep when you're dead mate <laughs> We sleep, we definitely sleep, but, you know, as I, I repeat, like, it's small business, it's what you've got to do, you know, the good years will be coming up, we like, yeah. we want to keep, we call the gym our baby, like, you know, we want to keep our baby running, um, yeah, we, we just don't want it to ever lose that personal touch, we, we just, we don't want it to ever, like you said, go into a business where it's just all about money and how yeah. many numbers, we're yeah. happy for the numbers to keep coming in, but it's still going to be a high five at the door and a bum slap. Yeah. Um, and us, you know, knowing every single person, what they're doing, how they're doing, and how their day was. And, um, you know, as long as we can keep that feel within our gym um, and keep moving forward, that'll make more time. Mm. You know, more customers means Brody could get off the tools. Yeah. You know, we could have done that now if we wanted to stay in the space that we're in. Um, but we didn't, and you know, I'm lucky enough. I, I, you know, I do a little bit of social media work on the side for some for some companies, so I make a little bit of extra money that way too. So we've got a few things happening that are that are growing, which means that's another thing I do. So there's a few more hours of the day gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a, that, that's in, I do that between two and four a.m. No, um, and you know, if we can get Brody off those tools, it means he's in the gym full time, which means he'll get those breaks a little bit like Thailand, where you sort of train all morning and have the rest during the day, and then train into the evening. And that that's that's the aim is what our biggest aim is getting Brody off those tools. Once he's off the tools, yeah. he's in the gym more, which means I get off holding pads so much, and I'll be able to get onto the office side of things a little bit more and be able to work on those sort of things. Mm. How do you how do you go, Brody, for like getting good sparring partners and, and clinching partners for for getting you ready for your fights? Do you do you have to travel anywhere to other gyms, or you've you've got people in your gym that you can rely on that to to get the good sparring and clinching that you need for your fight preparations? Yeah, definitely. Oh, I, the boys in the gym are pretty good with um. You know, I I don't. I think. Anyone, you can work with anyone, you know, whether if they're not the most technical person around. It's about moving around, you know. I've got some big monsters in our gym. Um, but for my last fight with Noel Rose, I went down to Corporal Box in Ipswich and worked with Chris White, the Tiger White, from down there. Yep, yep. Um, you know, Tiger and I fought twice um, a long, long time ago, and, you know, it was still good mates. And, you, you fought him. Um, he, I ran he... into him, he, and, yeah, he got off with... Elise rang him goes, can, can Brody come down and clinch and spar with you? And he's like, yeah, 100%. And yeah, we're down there for a few hours um, down down there training with him. So, yeah, no, like there's always people around. I have mates that have been fighting for a while. They'll come in and they'll spar me. Um, but you got to work with what you got to. Like, yeah. I also got a family that I can't just abandon. Yes, fighting is important for me and that, but my family is my number one priority as well. Tiger was... You were his last fight, weren't you? Like he, you were the last person that he fought before he retired in Perth on Epic, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So we fought the first time um, in an Epic, the first Epic it could have been, um, and we drew. And I think that was going to be his retirement fight. Yeah. Um, but he didn't want to end on a draw, and then um, so uh, they wanted him the fighter retirement fight. I think they, they threw up Aaron Lee again because they fought a few times. Um, but Riddler's like, no, you, you and Brody had a draw. Like, he deserves the shot to have a go again. And that's when we fought yeah, and end up being his retirement fight. Yeah, that's Such, right. Like, the two of them in a ring together is just beautiful Muay Thai. Like, I loved watching them fight because it's like just two, uh, just in that weight division, the, the, the technical ability between the two of them is just awesome. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, and with that being said, Brody, um, have you got any opponents? Because I know you said that you, you're still keen to fight. So have you got anything lined up or that you're looking to, to get lined up for this year that you can tell us about? Or is it still in the works? No, it's still in the works. I haven't got anything. I haven't, I haven't really put my feelers out yet. Like I said, now with, that, with the gym um, expanding. Um, that's probably where all my time and energy is going to go in at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'm only I'm I'm, okay, I'm 30. Um, I still I feel fresh as I, I feel I could go another five ten years. Like I I got no problem. So a couple of months off here actually 
won't hurt me to actually probably freshen me up and once we're in the full swing of things, I can rip in even even harder than, than I ever have. So nothing right now, but, you know, I, I, you never know. That things can always just pop up. <laughs> I will say, though, like we have made that decision and I do think that we probably have been a little bit rash with, like I know that since we opened the gym, there's been two fights. Um, for two good name pies that we've taken on one on 10 days notice and Brody fighting three kilos heavier oh no five up to five kilos heavier than normal but we took it on board because we just get excited because yeah. yeah. his weight doesn't come up often yeah. and you know that, that was a pie you know it was a pie good name and then the other one was like three weeks yeah yeah and we just we do it because it's like you get excited and you want to do it and all that and Brody goes from zero to 100 in 10 days and the other one in three weeks and you know he's walked away with losses from it and i as as a pad holder a trainer and his wife i get the guilt for it i'm like i probably should have said say no um but we both get just as excited because the opportunity for his weight just doesn't come up up that often but we made a rule that unless it's a unless it's a proper fight camp it's just got to be no because he deserves the right to train properly for it um, but I do say that I get the guilt, but I think the weight of being a coach at our gym, um, I do still think it, it weighs on him still at the moment. But as we grow and get bigger and he's in fight camp, I want him to be able to switch off a lot more than he has to and like not be on the tools all day. And, you know, it'd be really nice for him not to have to come in the whole pad for, you know, five people and this and that yeah. and, you know, feel all that weight on his shoulders. So, you know, our sort of would just say no. Um, but I will say that there is something booked and he's not saying anything. <laughs> no, that's no worries. That's no worries. I'll, I'll just have to wait. No, like... nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Stop playing um, with my emotions. No, 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 no it's nothing. <laughs> but, um, he's taking his hand at me. Um, but anyway, things come out when they're meant to. But, um, you know, we just got to make smart decisions now because, you know, it's okay to have losses to good names and all those sorts of things, but it's what's going on behind the scenes and he needs to be giving it the right the right dedication, the right time. And actually, it wouldn't be dedication. He's giving it that, but remembering what his body's going through all day as well. Yeah. Um, it, he does take his toll. So, you know, being smart about it, especially now we're going to move Jim. Um, you know, he wouldn't go, you know, taking on, on a fight while all that's happening. Yeah. So, you know, you just need to be smart about it and just get us settled. He's, he's only 30. He's still got plenty of years. I mean, look at John Wayne Park. Yeah. He's still going. Still, <laughs> still going. Um, he's still killing it. Yeah, he's got all those years, so there's plenty of years there. Um, and with the gym going strong, moving into a bigger premises... Um, bro, you've also got your, your fight page. If if people want to follow you, um, or they want more info on Team Stalder, or you know want to follow you um, with your fights, Brody, how how can people yeah. do that? Yeah, so oh, well on Instagram, on my Instagram is just uh, Brody Stalder, um, and also we have um, our website Team Stalder Muay Thai. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. I just train people to fight. This is the business lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the website here is right. I'm oh, wrong. I'm wrong. Right. I'm okay, wrong. I'm right. Well, there's a, there's a first. I'm right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, he was right with that. Yeah, but he's Brody Stalder on Facebook and on Instagram, and yeah. then we've got Team Stalder Muay Thai on Facebook and on Instagram, and then we um, have our website and emails and phone and, you know. Yeah, so we always, on our Instagram, our Team Stalder Instagram, we get we put up stuff nearly every single day um you know we like to show everyone what happens in our gym you know people a lot of people don't realize they'll, they'll look at it and and they're too nervous to come in because they don't know what to expect so we like to put it out there um you know and people like to watch and they go man i really want to have a crack at that and um yeah that's why we put the stuff we do what on there people that have said that they wanted to come in but was too nervous but then it was good to see that the variety of what we were posting actually showed that we were at all levels all abilities mm. all ages and so that's what made them want to walk in because maybe they saw someone like them that they could you know relate to, relate to so it was really cool um so that's what i'm glad that we're able to show is that you know that we've got that variety we're, we're on the social media so keep watching and see that you know that's possible to walk in that door and get a great workout and you know 90% of our gym don't fight 
and that's not what it's about. It's yeah. just about loving the sport and finding something uh, within that sport that makes you happy, whether it's the fitness side or, or the technique or, you know, just, just learning it for confidence that, you know, yeah, you've got to get in and do it. Or if you're, you know, competing as a goal. I just want to, I, we just want to commit, you know, we want to mainstream Muay Thai so, you know, the next generation, whether it be not our, my kids, but their kids, they they can do it as a job and get paid because there's not many other fighters, you know, get paid to do to do it. Um, so, you know, I want, I want these kids, you know, at Thai Cup, like the UFC guys that earn millions of dollars fighting. Yeah. Like, that's what they deserve because they put in just as hard hard work than anybody else so yeah that's our that's our that's our big goal <laughs> yeah, most well, of, most you're also talking to a guy Brody that you know had 79 fights been doing this 21 years and he's basically never had a sponsor you know like you know you're looking at guys out there now that are having one fight and they're putting up on Instagram you know looking for sponsorship oh. and I sit back just shake my head and just go are you actually kidding me um, I can tell you now that like we have rules with the guys in our gym, like you know, don't don't be doing that. Just knuckle down. Mr. Brody's had seventy nine. He's never done that. Yeah, do the hard work. I had I had a guy um, wanting me to add to his GoFundMe because he wanted to do, he wanted to he he worked full time and he wanted like two thousand dollars to pay for his training so he could have a pro boxing fight. I thought to myself, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's, and that's not dedication. That's just lazy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, like, what do you need two thousand dollars for, mate? If you work and like, met, so many people are, you know, professional fighters and and still have day jobs, aka yourself, and you know, but they don't sit there asking for. I think that go funny. That that really annoys me because what was made yeah. to to start as as um, helping people that genuinely needed it is now just turned into a piss take, in my opinion. I agree. Oh, I think it's for people that want to do something, so they're asking people to support them. And I'm like, well, no, we have something like our kids. I couldn't, if I told you, jaw would drop and what we pay at the level that our kids play at their sport. And our choice is, if it's our choice and their choice to do it, then we pay for it. Mm. If we can't afford it, they don't do it. Yep. And that's as simple as it is. There's no GoFundMe page because my kids want to play at a high level sport. Um, I just, that's a choice that you make. If you can't afford it, you don't do it. Uh, we we say that, you know, with our gym walking in the door, like, you know, that's our fees and, you know, that's, that's just what it is. Like, yeah. we're not, you know... You don't have to pay it and that's fine. Like, you know, you, if you want to go somewhere else that's cheaper or do go to a gym that you'll pay an arm and a leg for, you, you're going to get what you paid for. But with us, I think we're, we're worth what we, what, we, what we charge. And if anyone's been in a Muay Thai gym and see how much... Like, like your trainers cop a flog and like they can't you can't pay them enough no no <laughs> so yeah getting back to that it just it, it gets me and apologies to anyone that listens to it that's got it but seriously 79 fights and really no sponsors definitely it's you know some help here and there 100 percent yeah um you know with bits and pieces but you know not no sponsor no sponsor happening and you know logoed out with anything and he's not asking for it either um, and then you turn around and you're watching two fights and they're, they're writing letters and, and asking for it. I just turn around and say, knuckle down and work. <laughs> and, um, you know, you shouldn't be, shouldn't be asking for handouts to, to do something that you should be just loving mm. doing. Like, it's just not the way that it is. Absolutely agree, guys. Now, just before I let you leave, anyone, yeah. last but not least, anyone that you guys want to thank or give a shout-out to, it's all yours. Yeah, definitely for me and Elise. Um, well, on a personal level, like, like I said, Aaron Reese uh, from Rizzers and uh, Mark Selden. Um, they've been massive influences on me. Um, I was lucky enough to go overseas with Rizzo a few times and I got to fight against his, with his boys and he's also cornered me. Like, um, and Seldy, Seldy's helped me on a few on a few fight camps and he's, they've flown, he's flown over and cornered me and... Um, and in business wise, they've helped Elise and I, you know, source things and gave us tips where you know they've made mistakes and where we could, you know, better from what they've done. So you know, they don't have to do that, um, but they do it because they also love the sport. Well, I can still remember Riddler looking at Brody in the eye and saying, "Anywhere you are in the world, you know, if you need me, I'll be there." And I was like, "Whoa, like yeah. that's huge." 
Basically. Yeah. Oh, Double Dose, um, Double Dose Muay Thai. They opened up um, that... Um, Nikita and Benji, right? Yeah. They opened up around the same time as us. As us um, and it was pretty cool to watch them. So we've always uh, kept in contact, being that they're also another husband and wife um, team. Um, she's still actively fighting. Um, and it's just, you know, we were only on the phone last week talking about the fact we're getting a new building and talking over business ideas and what they've done and what we're doing. And um, it's really cool to have Muay Thai community like that. I wrote to Sharon Richards, the photographer, and asked her where they got floor mats from. Um, I do that, like, yeah, Mark Easy. Um, I wrote to him saying that we're moving gyms out of nowhere. What'd you do? Saw that you got a new ring. And he's straight away next day sending me ones off Gumtree and... You know, it's really cool. Mm. You know, for the Muay Thai community just to be able to write to them. You know, I feel like they know Brody. They've known Brody since, you know, he was such a little kid and I'm his wife. So for me to be able to sort of write to these people and just sort of say, you know, hey, it's Elise Brody's wife. Um, and, you know, can you help me source these things or where did you get this? And there's no issue with it. Like, mm. you know, they're another gym. They're not a competitor. It's just the Muay Thai community. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's huge to me. Yeah, that is um, one of the good things you about know, Muay Thai. If you can't pick up the phone and do that, um, you know, then what's the world come to? Yeah, that's it. you got to help everyone. got to be nice people. <laughs> well, it's what goes around comes around. 100%. Well, guys, as if you weren't busy enough already, I really appreciate um, the fact that you made a couple of hours to have a chat with me and um, really love what you're doing and uh, can't wait to, uh, to see what else is, uh, what's going to be, what, 2019 and the, and the rest of the years come through that they're going to bring. So thanks very much for your time. Thanks, mate. Thanks for the opportunity to, to let us speak. Yeah, thanks for chasing us, and um, now you can see why it took a while for this to happen. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it won't happen overnight, but it will happen. That's it. Thanks, Kicking still talk some shit with me. I'll ask so you can answer and explain to me the history. I had to throw a vicious knee. I got a passion for the heart. I ain't limbs. I'm just asking from the heart. So as I conclude this interview, thanks so much for sitting through. Loved all the fighters and the folks that listen. This for you.